Welcome everyone. I wanted to do a quick video about proof of work versus proof of stake. This was actually inspired by episode 22 on the Cardano Effect podcast where we had the crypto lark on. And towards the end of the episode, we were talking about the environmental impacts of proof of work versus proof of stake. And something that Lark said really resonated with me and I wanted to do a little bit more research. I've done videos about this before, but I wanted to get down to the facts and figures in order to properly assess what the difference between both is. And Lark was saying something along the lines that 80% of the energy that's used to mine Bitcoin is renewable energy. So I wanted to do a quick comparison of the system that Bitcoin employs and the system that Cardano employs and how that translates to energy usage. And we can talk about this whole idea of renewable energy and exactly what that means in the context of cryptocurrency. So that being said, I went online and went to a certain website that estimates the number of terawatt hours per year that the Bitcoin ecosystem uses. This is based on all the miners. So all those little ASIC mining machines that are mining Bitcoin around the world, they all contribute to this, this number. And the estimate increases and decreases based on the usage of the Bitcoin blockchain. So when the markets are more saturated and there's more usage and there are more transactions flowing through the ecosystem, the the computational problem that is solved for each block on the Bitcoin network increases in difficulty and that will probably increase the, the mining difficulty and may make your machine obsolete in the future. But all that energy, all that electricity is used somehow within this ecosystem. So on the left hand, we see the number. So this just represents a day and I believe I have 758 data points. So that represents about two years of data. And on the right, you see the estimated terawatt hours per year. And just to let you know that two years ago it was around 10 terawatt hours per year. And now it's around, I believe, 50, if I'm not mistaken. And this is actually more energy or it's similar to the amount of energy that entire countries use, like small countries, of course, not the United States, but smaller countries. That's the energy output that they use. So it's very interesting. So people in the proof of work community, especially the Bitcoin maximalists, I want to warn everyone. A lot of the Bitcoin maximalists out there are going to argue something along the lines that, oh, you know, well, it is better than the system that we have now. And that is an argument that doesn't really make much sense. It's called the fallacy of relative privation. So that basically means that whenever you have an argument, you say, well, it's less, it's not as bad as this, or this is just not, you know, even though this has an effect, it's not as bad as this system. Let me give you a quick example. Let's say you're in a small town and there's an accident, a car accident. And let's say there's a five car pile up and people are injured, cars are destroyed, maybe some road damage as well. And then you go inside the city and then there's a pile up too, but there's 20 cars that are piled up. People are injured, cars are damaged, roads are, are messed up. Someone may argue, oh, well, it's not as bad as this, but it's still bad. People got hurt, property got damaged, people undergone will have to undergo certain trauma. It's bad in both cases. So while, while there's one system that may affect systems more, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily doesn't validate the other system. You can't just say just because it's not as bad as this, it means it's good. And we have to really put it into perspective, because if you if you look at the current credit card systems, the current fiat monetary systems, Visa, MasterCard, you add up all of that. They use about 100 terawatt hours per year of energy. And when we scroll down to Bitcoin, we see that that number is relatively it's approaching that it's approaching that. So towards the height of the bull run, I believe there was around 77. It was around 77 terawatt hours um, at its max. Now it's around 50 terawatt hours. So it's not too far from the current monetary system. And we have to understand, is it worth it in the end? When there are better models out there, when there's going to be proof of stake models out there that are much more energy efficient, is it worth it? Is it worth it? 
So I graph these two and um, on my x-axis you see the number of days and on the y-axis you see the estimated terawatt hours per year. And then I did a um, power series equation and that bring up an r-squared value of 0.739. And this is basically the correlation to this trend line. So the correlation of the data points to the trend line. The closer it is to one means the more there's more relation between the two variables. So in, in essence, there's a, there's a correlation between the number of days versus the estimated terawatt hours per year. If the R squared value was like 0.1, there would be very small or no correlation between the number of days and the estimated terawatt hours per year. So I ran a linear line, a linear trend line, uh, a power series logarithmic, uh, exponential and this one was the highest R squared value so I'm gonna be using that for now maybe over the years there may be another line that's that fits these points better but this is the data that I received now and then you can use this to extrapolate information in the future so that being said this is the trend line and the equation is y equals 1.0423 x to the 0 0.1 0.6174 power and um, the reason why I did this is because I can use this to extrapolate the energy usage in the future. So if you're not familiar with John McAfee, he has the infamous $1 million Bitcoin prediction by the end of 2020. And a lot of Bitcoin maximalists seem to think that it's going to go to a million dollars at some point. So you may or may not be right. That's not really the point. Let's say it does go to a million dollars by the end of 2020. So we can calculate the number of days. I believe it was 1,418 days from day one of, this, uh, of these points. You plug that in and you get around 92 terawatt hours. And you remember I told you that the current fiat system or the current system, it uses approximately 100 terawatt hours of electricity. So there's really no difference now. They're relatively the same. And the systems are gonna still be clogged you know, there's still the 10 minute waiting times for blocks to confirm. I know Lightning Network is coming soon, but until we see that 10 minute wait confirmation um, and there are certain issues that are in place that it's just much easier to use the current monetary system. And that's way too much electricity. And that's given certain parameters. If something goes mad, I believe that it probably can well exceed 100 terawatt hours and a lot of users come into the system, it's going to stress it out. The complexity of the blockchain is going to increase and it's going to be an exponential increase just like the price. That being said, 80% of the energy is supposed to be renewable. So I was verifying this, Lark said it on the episode, and it's this uh, person who seems to be a Bitcoin maximalist who published a book. Uh, the findings, the exact findings haven't been really published, but um, you know, let's assume that what he says is true. Uh, until I see the concrete paper, I, I will I will have my doubts. But let's say what he says is true. Um, what does renewable energy mean? Renewable energy means wind power, hydroelectric power, uh, solar, um, various green methods of renewable energy using using renewable resources in order to generate the electricity to mine Bitcoin. So let's say 80% of that is used. But you have to remember that just because something is green or says it's green doesn't mean it's green. You know, batteries, solar panels, um, wind turbines, they all take extreme amounts of non-renewable resources in order to create them. And they're not exactly easy to recycle. You know, it's, it takes a lot of energy to build these systems. And we're not using nuclear yet. So, you know, nuclear could be argued that it's a lot cleaner and it takes it produces a lot more electricity but um, there are certain things that are touted as clean but not necessarily clean let me give you a quick example um, I always go back to Tesla Tesla's great it's a wonderful company I'm really happy that they moved in the direction of electric cars we need to migrate away from uh, non-renewable resources um, and I think that's the that's the way to go but at the end of the day, people are driving around in Teslas thinking that they're saving the environment. But in reality, you know, maybe in the future they may, but there's still some energy cost that 
are required in order to create a Tesla. You have to charge your Tesla. It's going to use probably a mixture of non-renewable and renewable energy in order to charge. And I guarantee you, guarantee you, please timestamp this. In 10 years or 20 years, you're going to see a Vice News documentary or a Vice documentary about how lithium, bi um, lithium batteries from Teslas are leaching lithium um, into waterways and landfills and whatnot. Because at the end of the day, in order to recycle lithium batteries, they can't really recycle the lithium. They recycle the copper and the metals that are that constitute the battery. But a majority of the battery gets wasted. Um, people need to understand that renewable energy always doesn't mean renewable. It doesn't mean zero, zero cost. So move, let's move forward. So Cardano is a proof of stake cryptocurrency, and it's much more sustainable. So terawatt hours is just a magnitude of energy magnitude of power. So let's move to Cardano. Charles Hoskinson debuted a couple AMAs ago about how stake pools can potentially run on a rock pie. And a rock pie is similar to a Raspberry Pi, very small devices that are very lightweight and portable, and they don't use a lot of power at all. So I took that as the basis, the, the minimum of what Cardano needs in order to run successfully. And we know that when Shelly deploys, there's going to be at minimum 1,000 staking pools. That's what they're aiming for. So let's say 1,000 staking pools. So I calculated a rock pie uses about 4 watts per hour and around 96 watt hours in a day. So I calculated that for a year, and then I multiplied that by 1,000. And I was received. I received the number 9.6 times 10 to the negative 8th, I believe. I'm not sure if that's correct. Um, but around there, very small amount of terawatt hours if every single stake pool was was running on a rock pie. So it's very interesting to see that this entire ecosystem can be deployed by using a fraction of a terawatt hour. I mean, this is like Charles was saying, the entire Cardano could probably run on the same electricity it takes to power a few electric heaters, give or take, for a year. To, to run the entire financial ecosystem. Just think how staggering that is. You could burn more energy in your house than Cardano would use to run this entire financial ecosystem. That's what I call engineering excellence. Engineering excellence. If there are any other words, please drop them below. And let's assume that not everyone is going to be running a stake pool on, on, a, on a rock pie. You know, that's a safe assumption. But the average server wattage is around 7,466 kilowatt hours. So I multiplied that out times 1,000, and we, we get around 0 0.0075 terawatt hours per year. It's crazy. I mean, we're, we're running on less than the system that Cardano is, is, is running. It's thousands, thousands of times more efficient than Bitcoin. And, you know, right now it's probably well over 6,000 times more efficient than Bitcoin when Shelly releases. And in the future, it may be 10,000, it may be 20,000. And it does everything that Bitcoin is going to do and more. And more. It's staggering. It is staggering. If that is not engineering excellence, then what is? We're trying to live more sustainably. We're trying to be more efficient with the resources that we have on this planet. If Bitcoin is a Hummer... H3, which one was very inefficient? Spewing gasoline in the air. And let's say that Ethereum is the H, I don't know, H4. You know, they put like a, a, a more efficient energy system in there. And let's say cryptocurrency X is a Tesla. Cardano is like a car with a small nuclear reactor in there. And probably runs on hydrogen. And, you know, very clean sources of energy. Probably taking water vapor from the air and, and um, converting it to energy. It is incredible. And at the same time, not even using resources from Earth, mining some kind of space asteroid in order to use the metals from there. It's just so efficient. It's very efficient. That's my point. So I just wanted to get that through. This is a quick rant video. Well, it actually wasn't quick. It was very long. But please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about the environmental impacts between Cardano and Bitcoin and proof of stake versus proof of work. I can compare more, but let's say 50 terawatt hours right now to not even a terawatt hour.
a fraction of a terawatt hour. And that's what it is. So, you know, new models come out all the day, all day. And I have nothing against Bitcoin. Bitcoin is great. But be careful about the Bitcoin maximalists who tell you Bitcoin is the one to rule them all. And I'm sure Bitcoin is going to a very, very high price. I'm not telling anyone not to invest in Bitcoin. Do so, you know. But be careful because there's going to be better out there. You know, the same people, you're, you're the BTC maximalists that you're listening to, show, let them, you know, DM them and try to figure out how much Bitcoin they have in their wallet. And that'll let you know exactly where their priorities are. It is what it is. There's going to be better versions out there. And if Bitcoin could solve them all, then, you know, there wouldn't be other 2,000 other cryptocurrencies out there. And um, obviously they haven't. They're not going to be the one to rule them all. They're not going to be the one to figure out everything. They're going to exist and they're going to exist very well and they're going to thrive. And who knows, they may be number one for, you know, years on end. But eventually there's going to be a more efficient system that comes along. And try to figure out what that system is and maybe figure out what that project is. And I think that Cardano has a chance. And, you know, let me know what you think. And until the next episode, thank you.